I think Lampard's just stumbling across. I think for me, Havertz is is top draw for me. You know, he hasn't scored many goals, but I mean, the way he carries the ball up from the mid, in the midfield, uh, he's a very intelligent footballer. Uh, I think I think we've actually got a really good squad, and I think the minimum for us should be challenging for the title. I think uh, so, especially in a season like this. Yeah, especially seasons like this. I think you know, I think Ziyech was one. You know, I think he's twenty eight years old. I think a lot of people. We're questioning us paying the money for someone, obviously, with not that much resale value in terms of his age. And yeah, because I don't think Chelsea go down that route anymore. You know, we got to try and go under 25. I think ZX, someone we've got in to win now, you know, and I think he's he's delivering at the minute. You know, he's played two games, he scored two goals now, two starts. And I think, um, I think he for him for me, him and Thiago Silva and Mendy have been our best free signings. What's happening, people? Welcome back to Everyone's a Pundit. This is episode 51, and I'm joined with two pundits today. We haven't got three in the house, just two today. Um, but to be honest, that's probably good for me because an, a third one could just send me right on the after today's result. Um, I'm not really in a good mood. I'll just let everybody know that from the jump. So let me try and compose myself today. Anyway, man, please... Introduce yourself, guys. If we can start with yourself, please, Lawrence. Yeah, hi, I'm Lawrence Vigaru, massive Chelsea fan. Uh, yeah, happy with the result this weekend. Looking forward to being on it. Wicked, yeah. We're going to get into that result as well. Um, and the other present, Dan. Come on, aka Mr. Dash Active TV, a dash of sports, as Dashiki Dash in the house. Come on, I'm here. And he's he's happy, he's smiling. He's an Arsenal fan, people. For those of you who are not familiar and are just listening that can't see, um, I'm Semps. I'm your host. I'm a United fan. That is why I'm not in the best of moods right now. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the like button. If you um, if you enjoy the podcast, share about with your friends, share about with your family, share about with your people. And yeah, man, we're gonna get into it. Premier League season, Premier League weekend is 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 it's always throwing up some surprises. This week, the results are as follows: Wolves beat Crystal Palace two 0 on Friday. Mm. Sheffield United lost one 0 at home to Man City. Burnley lost three 0 at home to Chelsea. As I said, we're gonna discuss that. Liverpool went on to beat West Ham two one. Aston Villa in a mad game, which was today on Sunday, lost um, 4-3 at home to Southampton. Newcastle beat Everton 2-1. Not sure if many saw that coming. That was not actually predicted, actually. I, told I didn't see that. that. I reckon that um, they'll get a win today. And Tottenham ended up winning. They beat West... Um, what is it? Brighton. They beat... Debrey Brighton. And then Man United... Lost one nil. Come on, you gunners! Get in there. Yeah. Woo. So anyway, <laughs> let's start with let's start with you then, Dash. What do you make of the result? What did you like? What didn't you like? And yeah, what did you think? Sam, you already know how I am. I'm very pragmatic. I'm very uh, down to earth when it comes to my club. So going into this game, I already was a bit. I thought to myself. We, we, have, we haven't won away from home at a top six club uh, for the longest time, even more so at United. So it wasn't really a game that I was very confident about. I did feel that it might be a draw just off the back of the results that we've been through. Obviously, having two, been through two defeats or two, was it two or three defeats. Yeah. So to have this one on top would have really of, of shaken our confidence. So I thought to myself, if anything, the players would have been at least up for this game to at least not come back with a loss. Uh, but hey, we, we played a really good game. I thought we were going to go into the game uh, and play like we played against Man City, trying to be on the back foot, wait for you to kind of invite, uh, invite you guys to just obviously uh, pressure us, um, which I was calling for. But then at the same time, when we played against Man City, I was calling for us to play exactly how we play today. Okay. So it's just like, you know what I mean? So it, it makes me feel a bit more like oh, we could have done this against City, but 
It was a really good game. Yeah, Everyone team though, isn't it? Yeah, they, the reason. But, I, I feel like at that time, just obviously just touching on City quickly, is they were there for the taking. Mm. But um, to, 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 to go back to this match, I feel like we did well to, put, uh, to be on the front foot, to put a pressure on you. And I think we played the better football. Um, we didn't panic. And Partey and uh, El Nene, whoo, they, they, just, they were just calm. I think that's what allowed everybody because usually we're quite erratic in terms of our defending when we're under pressure but the calmness that brought that was brought to the team from those two players it just exuberated to everybody else because even our defense line was was calm Leno today was calm with passing it out um so everybody all in all the only thing is I would just say it was one of those games where we had chances probably not clear-cut chances but chances that you would say going away from home you should be taking those chances and if you don't take those chances, you usually get stung in it, like in the second half. And I thought when you lot came out in the second half, you know, it's, you seemed like you was uh, you must have got a rollicking because the way you lot came out seemed like a, a lot better than the first 45. But then um, as the game went on, it just, it just seemed like you lot just went flat again. And then we got back into our groove and played at our tempo, played the way we wanted to play. And then obviously getting that penalty was um, probably deserved really in terms of just being one nil up or getting a goal I felt we deserved it and um, lucky enough we had someone that was able to dispatch it Aubameyang who hasn't scored in about five games so there's a lot of pressure on him um, but yeah he pulled it away and um, yeah one nil bit of a I wouldn't say smash and grab because it wasn't probably that type of game but one nil away from home I'll take that all day man and against United yeah man look Lawrence you didn't see the game did you so. No, nah, only only seen uh, seen the penalty to be fair, but um, from what I was hearing, apparently Partey was unbelievable. So seems and, like and he's, he's a big and you know, yeah. So yeah, it seems man. like he's been a really good signing for him. You know, like I think that's what they needed someone that's going to break up play and have good distribution with the ball when he gets it. You know, so I think that's that's something that they've been missing for the last I don't know since Vieira probably. So yeah. um, so for that, so for them, I think that's a great result for United. Just, I'm not. I'm not sold on the, top, the squad. I think the first eleven is very good, but I just don't think like once they someone gets injured or some they need to change things up. I just don't know if if United have a good enough eighteen, you know, or twenty players. I think to to challenge for the title, you know, and that's with the money they've spent in the last two, three, four years. I think they should be challenging for the. They should be right up there now, basically. In the Premier League, they've played two teams and that are looking likely to finish in the top six at home already, and they've they've got one point from it, you know. So I don't know. It's a bit. Of, I think only being under a bit of pressure now, but I just can't see. I can't see United pulling the trigger on him at the minute. Sims, you know what I would say? Just obviously as a rival team, and you know, United Arsenal, Arsenal United is it's, it's always going to has always been a top game probably not as as important as it used to be once upon a time but what I would say is just watching that game today and that feel not at one moment did I feel like United was going to do something Mm -hmm. I didn't feel no edge I didn't feel no bite there was never like a moment where I actually felt nervous like you guys are really going to do something and I don't know where that's gone really in terms of um, that edge that bite where it's gone uh, but from the last maybe few games that we've played against, you know, obviously we've had like two, two draws. We, we've um, beat you at, um, at Emirates. And obviously now this time we've um, beat you away from home. It's just that edge that lacks. And obviously throughout the week where we've been reminded of the Roy Keynes and the Vieira, um, you know, battles and stuff like that. Not to say that we, we're any close to those kind of rivalry, but it's just today's game. Yeah, you lot just lack that vibe, man, that edge. There was no one in your team that was really taking it and really commanding. But the thing is, is we can talk about um, Man United versus Arsenal or whatever it may be, but Man United versus Chelsea is a big game. Man United versus Spurs is a big game. Do you know what I'm saying? We're not seeing any difference in performances. Like you're talking about the bite. It's not a Man United versus Arsenal thing. We're just... No, no, no. We just... I meant... I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying we're we're just not seeing it. Like today, it was definitely not a smash and grab. Arsenal were the better team from minute mm. one to minute ninety, and we're at home. 
and Arsenal were controlling the football. We couldn't pass out from the press. So whilst it may look, if you look on the stats, it will say that we had 53% possession, I think it was. That was us just playing the ball around at the back. Do you know what I'm saying? We weren't advancing forward. And yeah. the, pro the problem that I have, you know, there's some people out there that say, Man United play freestyle football and a lot of people will get onto them. There's a few known <laughs> people, United fans out there that say that and people will get onto them because it doesn't, you know, support the the, the legend in, in Oli. But mm. the reality of the situation is today, Lawrence, yeah, we played, we played the 4-4-2 diamond as we did it against PSG. I mean, against RB, yeah, we played that today. Fred played at the base of the diamond today. And for Scott McTominay was meant to be on the right of the diamond. Scott McTominay is coming in and playing right alongside um, Fred. Fred. The ball. Now, tell me, how is that playing the 4-4-2 diamond correctly? That, for me, is just a lack of understanding of what you're meant to be doing at that time on the football pitch. Or you're just totally disregarding what your manager is telling you to do. It, it just doesn't make sense that we're seeing that at this level and it, and it was picked up on in commentary as well. And even at another point, Bruno Fernandes is playing in the 10, yeah? He's playing at the tip of the diamond. Mm. At one point, he's picked the ball up. This isn't from a corner or anything. This is from open play, Lawrence. He's gone all the way back and has stood in the centre-back position to pick the ball up to then get on the ball. Like yeah, that's they, you see when players do that, that's out of frustration, isn't it? Because yeah, he's not, not getting he's it. not he's not had the ball. He, like he was anonymous today. Like exactly. seriously, yeah, he yeah. Was, uh, but for a player that is that needs to be on the ball, um, that usually is your outlet. Um, when it's it's a lack of discipline in it. At the end of the day, it's a lack of discipline, but frustration as well. So I felt sorry for him for a bit, but yeah, it was it was one of them. It was strange to see it's, him that, that deep. It's it's just. For me, the players didn't know what they were meant to be doing. Like, one thing you can say about Arsenal today is, and I did say on my last Man United show that I'd done, whilst I was confident going into today's game and I thought we would win 2-1, I mm. said, I am worried about the fact that Arsenal are organised. Arteta, that's one thing no one can't knock. They might be annoyed with the way that Arsenal attack now, but you're compact, you're defensive, yeah, yeah. you're organised. And we if have... you look at their results, sorry, Sems, if you look at their results against the top six recently, yeah. they've actually got some, with under Arteta, they've actually got really good results. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's another yeah. thing as well. Like, yeah. so that they're very hard to break down in a big game. Exactly. You know I mean? and, and we struggle to break, the, break teams down. That's our problem. I've said it on here time and time and time and time again. You can throw in Haaland. You can throw in Cavani. If we don't create chances and we these players aren't going to have an impact on the game and we struggle to create chances we struggle to break teams down it's just the way it is i'm not it, it's it's there for everybody to see now we got yeah. outplayed by so arsenal would today on? would you blame that on recruitment would you blame that on the manager would you blame that on i i, I would say it's a bit of both in the sense that Recruitment hasn't been right in this, you know, we, we're going after players, we're not getting them, we don't seem to have a plan B, but you know, we've got enough players on the pitch to create chances. We do. We have enough good good quality players to oh, 100%. to break to break teams down better than what we're doing. So for me, it, it then has to be the coaching side of things because today you saw Anybody who was watching today, you saw one team that knew their roles and knew their position and knew what they mm. were doing. And the other team just looked clueless in what they were doing. But and what I would what I would say to that is if because right now we're on a high a bit of a eupho euphoria in terms of the match, getting the three points, yeah, beating Man United. But I how I would really analyze the game would be if we didn't get the penalty, I don't think we would have been able to break you down. As 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 we didn't break us down really. Yeah, we didn't. We the didn't, didn't have down. anything to do. I, I would say we played well. We kept the ball well. We kept the ball moving, but it wasn't anything that we you know we penetrated or there was a telling pass or any chances on goal. The head didn't do nothing. So I think, on the basis of it, the result yes is really good. But then when we actually kind of look at everything else, we're still going to be very critical in the terms of that we've not created chances. Um, you obviously was sat back. You had a you know a, a low block. 
we struggle with breaking down low blocks and stuff like that. So but we're the home side. We're the home side, Dash. We're the home yeah, side. We, we should I, be taking the initiative to you. We're the one on off the back of a great result in midweek. Like it's, I understand what you're saying, but you watched today's game. You even said it. Not at any time did you feel nervous at Man United. Yeah, at I did the, it. I at did the start it. of the second half, we changed the formation to a 4-2-3-1 and we came out and we looked a lot better for about mm. five, ten minutes. But then all it was is that you just took time to adjust to the new formation that we were playing and then you yeah. adapted and then it was and then it was that over was it, again. Yeah. You, were in, you were in total control today. Not at any time, other than that split pass that Rashford played to Greenwood, Good, you know, yeah, good pass, good chance. We yeah. didn't do anything else. Your keeper was was comfortable. So me watching that, at the end of the day, we needed the points. Yeah, you needed the points as well. But it's on us to go and win that game of football. Who was who yeah. was the pressure? Who was the pressure more on, um, Oli or Arteta going into this game? I think oh, Oli. I think Oli. Oli. Yeah. At the end of the day, Manchester United should not be where we are in the table. We need to start winning football matches. We're now four games. At home at the beginning of the season, no wins, three losses and one draw. That's that's not good enough for Manchester United. And we're off the back of a great result. We should have been going in buzzing today and getting three points, but it was anything but. It was such a poor performance from everybody. And now look, Paul Pogba's gonna get the headlines. He's gonna be the one criticized by a lot of people. But the reality of the situation is he committed that foul on 69 minutes. There was 69 minutes before he committed that foul when we never looked like doing anything. And we still had 20 minutes to rescue the game. Still had 20 minutes to still try and get a, a draw from that. Mm. And what happens after that? We still don't create anything. We still don't do anything. Do you do you think, Semps, yeah, that if Martial is not suspended, he was suspended today, wasn't he? Yeah, if he's I was not gonna... suspended, does, is, do you think Oli plays a different, forma plays a different formation and, and probably goes for it more than what he did today? Because no, in my I, opinion, I think uh, probably Cavani's probably not match fit yet. So he's obviously, he hasn't got another number nine, which is probably why he's gone with a 4-4-2 diamond. So if, he's, if Martial's fit, he probably plays his normal 4-3-3. He probably drops Fred out, plays McTom or plays Fred, McTominay or Fred, and then plays Pogba and Bruno, Rashford, Greenwood and Martial. Maybe, maybe Martial was actually a bigger miss than, than probably what, what people would actually give I, him credit. I for. thought so. I thought so. I thought if, if Martial was in the, in the team today, probably would have caused our back line a little bit more problems um, just from his pace and obviously his intelligence in the box as well. Like, because we're susceptible to sticking out a leg here and there. And, and you know yeah. how Martial is very tricky when he gets into the box. And it's no, it's no, it's no accident on why United get penalties because when Martial's on the ball in the box, you tap him yeah, right and down, uh, which course. are legit. Which are legit penalties. So I think I think that outlet was missing. I, I was surprised as well that McTom McTominay stayed on. Even the commentators were saying is that they were surprised that he he wasn't taken off. But what can you really do in that situation? To answer Van der your question, um, Lawrence, um, we would have still played the same formation today because of what we did in um, in RB in the week. Because that's what yeah. we, played. we played the four four two diamond and it worked. Martial was in that team that day though, and and I've been saying and it's funny because I'm gonna I'm gonna love it when I'm proved right on this one because Martial gets a lot of stick from a lot of the United fan base. Yeah, he does. That say he doesn't play the number nine role well enough. Yeah, well I've I keep telling you it's not about Martial. It's the system in the way we play. You throw any other number nine up there now, they all think that Cavani's the holy grail, that he's going to come in now and we're going to play different is what is what they've said. He will run the channels is what they've said. Since Cavani has come, and I'm not even getting on to Cavani, I'm not saying, I'm not blaming him, but since he's come, he's done zero. He's done nothing. It's going to take him time though, Sense man, come on. You're not, you're not listening, you're not hearing what I'm saying. He's, he's not impacted the game in any way, shape or form. Has he started? Huh? Has he started? No, he's not started any games. But I'm yeah, saying so when like, he's when he's so coming, when he's coming on, the point I'm making, Dash, is that mm. people have said is that we're gonna play a different way with a different number nine. Yeah, we 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 we're playing exactly the same. We're still not creating chances. We're not getting the ball out wide. We're not crossing the ball in for Cavani. We're not doing anything. Cavani's not stretching the defense. All of the things that they say that Martial doesn't do, we're not seeing. Mar we're not seeing Cavani do that in the time that he's been on the pitch. He's doing the exact same stuff because the system in which Manchester United play footballing at the moment 
is terrible and we don't have adaptable we, like Oli should have changed that formation today after 20 minutes. Yeah. After yeah. 20 minutes, he should have changed that formation today. It was not working. It was clear as day. It was not working. Lawrence, if you would have saw the game, we, we will get the ball from the defenders and they would pass it to De Gea. He'll pass it back to Maguire. Maguire will pass it to Lindelof. And, you know, I'm not even blaming the defenders because, you know, you play professional football. You can only play what's in front of you. If you've not yeah, got no course. options in front of you, what are you going to do? So it will yeah, look yeah. bad on the defenders. It will look bad on Fred or Scott or whatever. But we have no options. We couldn't play through their press because the system was all wrong. The Arsenal had us all picked off. And then all we all we ended up doing was getting caught on um, on our back line, kicking the ball out. I was like, all we have, we have to now start going long. So I thought when Cavani came on, we'll start doing that. We'll start going long. We didn't even do that. It was just on a, some, on just some Fellaini tables. But we would have still played the same formation today because of what we did against RB. We don't yeah. want to play the 4 2 3 1 because that doesn't work. Um, and, I mean, like you go and sign, how much was Van der Beek? 40 million? Yeah. Poor and, lad. And, 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 and the guy don't even get a sniff. Like, poor he lad. come on today, didn't he? But, Look upset. you know, like, I think it's, it's another one. It's like a panic buy, you know, like another team wants doesn't to. Fit. Doesn't fit the system, doesn't, does doesn't it? Doesn't fit the system. Yeah. Right. But but because you're United, like we can get him. Do you know what I mean? Because we haven't been able to get Sancho. You just go and get, do you know what I mean? Someone else. And it's just like I just don't understand the recruitment side of it. I just think that, you know, I think United need a link. Because don't get me wrong, Woodward, Ed Woodward gets a lot of stick, right? But in terms of the money that he generates for that club, is probably the best in England. Considering United haven't been nowhere near the Premier League title in years. Yeah, yeah. We're still... For him to generate the money that he does, I just don't I don't think he has a clue about football. I just don't I just don't think he I just don't think he lives and breathes football, you know? He does like so it's like he goes and buys a player that yeah, maybe he's he is a good player, Van der Beek. I've seen him loads of times at Ajax, but does he fit United? Did United really need did United really need him? They needed a right winger. They needed a right they needed winger. A winger. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? He's not a right winger. No. You've got Bruno, you've got Pogba that can do what Van der Beek what does. Van der Beek does, yeah, yeah. No, you're, t- you're totally right. And, and, and look, Oli's going to get a lot of stick. And for me, I've said it as well. When you do well, I'll give you your flowers. So in the midweek, I gave Oli his flowers. I gave his flowers against PSG. But he got tactically wrong today and he wasn't adaptable. And again, it showed his lack of tactical ability. And, you know, the, the football that we play is not good enough. But... Oli, Oli to one side, Oli is not the whole problem at Manchester United. It is a bigger problem in the sense of how we recruit because Jose had the same problem, LVG had the same problem, Oli's got the same problem. You know, he's not even playing, he's not even looking to play Donny van der Beek, which makes you think, did he even want him? Do you know what I'm <laughs> you know saying? What? You, know, you know what the fear is now? That you, that this, this young boy doesn't get crushed, man. Like his confidence doesn't get crushed because he it's already funny. looks... Yeah, man, he really looks like a guy that obviously you gotta remember he's come from a club where he was adored. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. He walking down the streets, um, and you know everybody knows who he is and all of that, and he's part of the club, he's part of the fabric, and then obviously coming to a massive club like Man United, and you don't get to play. That is that is must be a dent in your confidence. Yeah, and the even long- like the team is winning week in and week out. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's and, another thing. Like, yeah, he got like, come on in every week. How many, many uh, how many goals he scored now? How many goals he scored now? Donny. Yeah, one. One. He's got one one goal. goal. Obviously, he came on. He scored a goal. He's he's been impactful. So, and as you said, when your team's not playing well, then you're thinking to yourself like, right, surely I can come on and make a difference, or surely it should be my turn now to kind of show what I can do and stuff like that. So, the longer this goes on, and if he's literally been bought just to be a number two or a, a side man in terms of the squad rotation that could do a lot of damage for his confidence you know what I mean so it is one of those things where you just it is you did definitely get into a position where where you didn't buy the Sancho uh, get the Sancho deal done um was it a panic buy now you gotta ask yourself that question was it a panic well, buy? But, or then, was... but then but then on the flip side you look at Arsenal crying out for that midfielder that's gonna break the play up do mm. this do that and they go and get one. It might. It wasn't a panic buy because they probably targeted him 
for the whole of the summer. Yeah, they knew they was always like, getting him. They just left. They him. knew they was going to get him, yeah. and and they yeah. go and get the one that they, they really wanted. Do you know what I mean? They shift the people that they don't want out, and it just looks like everyone's all in there. You know, like Arteta's yeah. identified. He wants Partey. He knows what he what he's going to bring to the team, and they go and get him, and he's played three four games now, and he's been very good in. All of them, especially today. So you're right. You know, for just us, for, to show. For us, we we have definitely like, especially now we've we've in the in the last how many games the parties played now? Maybe two, two or three. three games. And um and you've just seen like the work that he does in terms of breaking up the play, carrying the ball. If he now just then had that one more person to be able to then give the ball to that creative yeah, you're player, missing that creative link man that, between that, the, yeah. yeah. So he does. All They've that, got one that, there training. Don't do nothing. He's trained. <laughs> nah, it's, you know what? Like, as, as you know, the media will, will always hype that up. But you gotta remember, man. Even from the uh, Arteta coming in and um, taking over as manager, he's giving him his chance. And uh, Ozil's a uh, he plays five games. One of the games he looks decent, not like well beaten, but he looks decent. And then four of the games he don't play well. So you can't but, have the inconsistency. Dash, don't you think now with Partey in the team having somebody to do? The, dog, the the real doggy work behind him that he would be able to flourish in this type of team because um, again, there's there's a lot of players out there that when you're a creative player you you should you should be having the team built around you and I, I guess he's been there a long time and I'll so get, yeah I'll get so I was gonna touch on that, that he's not play but I think now with somebody like a Parte there mm. you may then be able to start to get the best out of Özil but I think it I think it's one of them things where the damage is done. It's, yeah. it's, 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 he's one of those players that are uh, amongst other players that are from the Wenger era that needs to go. So I think the club, whatever the, the reasons are being, whether it's, whether it's footballing reasons or whatever it is behind the scenes. Really, you don't really think it's footballing reasons, do you? That he's been left out I think, of the whole squad. I, I, think the it's a combina- I think it's a combination of everything. I think it's one of them ones where the club has just had enough with Seriously? him. As, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he's not, he's not, I don't see him as being behind the scenes causing a problem, though, is he? No, but at the same time, let's not kid ourselves, man. We, we, a lot of non Arsenal fans now will be turning around and, and trying to praise Ozil and say Ozil this, but you, you are the same fans that will be dissing Ozil, who will go to the Etihad and be standing around with his hands in the air, not chasing the ball down and all that kind of stuff. No, so, but I'm talking about not to be given a squad, like not to be a, a uh, attached to the whole Premier League squad. For- what, whatever the re- that's what I'm saying. We, we it's all speculative. Whatever the reason is, I think honestly, I think it's a combination of everything. Like him as a whole package. Whether the money side of things, he's he, uh, on the field. He's not really covering himself with glory. And then also whatever he, he whatever he's done to the board that I've made that final decision to be like, look, we've got a three hundred and fifty thousand pound per week player on the bench and we're given a sanction for it to for you not to pick him. Whoever's made that decision, they're they're happy enough to go with that. And the fact that he's gonna be his contract gonna be up in the summer, I think I think it's too right. Just just do what you need to do. We need to move on. We need to get the, the younger player or the fresher player. We need to move in a different direction. There's no point of just hanging on to Ozil. Even if we play him now and he does well, yes, it could help us uh, push on but then we're still going to have to move in a different direction once he's gone. So, yeah, cut ties now. I'm happy with it. And um, hopefully, if it's a case we can get something in January, then we get something in January. If it's in the summer, um, then we have to wait until the summer because realistically, Arsenal, we're not going to go into the transfer window and buy like two, three great players of 40, 50 mil. You know what I mean? We're always that one great player then we find a loan deal. Then we find a cheap 1.5 million deal. That's how we do things. So I'm not expecting us to go into the transfer window. It would have been very, very um, lucky of us if we got a while for the cut price that we were looking to buy for about 35 to 40 mil because they were asking 60 mil. And we knew that we was going to do the parte deal. We just mm-hmm. tried to broker the OR deal on a real cheap so that we can then trigger the uh, parte deal. And then we would have been like, wow, great business. Because that's what Arsenal love doing. They love to just try to go in a window and try and create the most, like, best deal ever. The 40 mil plus one. They always try to get some type of headline with the transfers. But yeah. we just got to be patient, man. We just got to be patient. It's looking like it's coming along. Uh, we, we, it, and the good thing, just to end on this one, the positive thing out of everything, we can now clearly see that we need that creative. 
So there's no ifs and buts. So the next yeah. window, we know that we have to get that creative player. We've got the defensive colossus in Gabriel. Absolutely. Yeah, like, he was good. Man, he didn't have another, much to do, but he was another good. great performance. Even and Holding just, looked good today, and Holding's anything. So I would. But you know, no, nah, do you know what? Him. Yeah, do you know what? Holding has good games, man. Like he has good games. Like yeah, where Holding's he, he nothing deals, special, though, bro. He, he deals. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been looking for all, another defender. Do you know up, what I'm saying? Up, that's met. That's like you. Should, that's like any other team, innit? You just want to upgrade. But I, what I'm saying is like I. Ex- I, I'm not surprised by that type of performance from Holding. I'm not surprised by that, you know what I mean? But Gabriel, Partey, and now we're just missing that creative player, Spine, and hopefully maybe Aubameyang can start playing down the middle because I don't want to get onto Lacazette because I just want to keep this uh, positive Arsenal vibe thing, but Laka, oh, yeah. you, you never want to be negative at all, do you? <laughs> nah, man, but Laka, his, his time is done. never wants done. to say anything bad, boy. His time Jeez. is done, but... We'll leave that for another time. But yeah, we just yeah. need our spine to be fixed. Lacazette is dead. Although Lacazette played all right today as well, to be fair. Nah, nah, man. It balls, the football was coming off his shins. It was like, nah, man. He's, 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 and the fact that he's competing with Eddie and Ketia just shows you everything about Lacazette right now. You know how he plays? He plays like, you know when you know to yourself nothing else is going right for you, but you know, you're trying to do that hard work running around and stuff like that. At this stage of his career, he should not be it shouldn't be that. You should be scoring goals. You should be getting goals on target. But let me just leave it there, man. We won today. So, you know what I mean? Good vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, move, we'll move on. We'll move Love on. You, just, just as a parting thing for Man United, you know, we're, what, seven points after after six games. We're, it's like four four games at home now and we've not won any. So it's, it's serious stuff. We've got Everton next game now. Uh, and yeah, man, this I'm serious. It's serious now at Old Trafford, and um, is that a home, right? Nah, we've played two. Away. We've already played four at home, so that's that's going to be at Goodison. But um, yeah, Oli Oli's got it all to do now. We've got Champions League in midweek again. I guess he's probably going to change the formation again, try something new, try something different. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how we bounce, how we get out of this now. Um, I think he is under pressure. He says weird things in, in his post-match interviews, you know, saying that it took us to 10 games before we won our third game last season or some crap last. You know, those are telltale signs, man, when you start shaking as a manager with them kind yeah, of comments. Chatting nonsense, man. But anyway, let us know what you're saying, people. Leave a comment on what your thoughts were about today's game. Who's to blame? You know, um, Keane was hamming the players. But for me... Um, the performance from everybody. I think when when you've got a collectively bad performance week in and week out, it can't just be the players. There has to be more to it than that. But let us know what you think, people. We'll move on to Chelsea now. So Lawrence can get to smile. As well. <laughs> you know, so you guys won 3-0 away to Burnley. To be honest, Burnley are going to go down this season. So... Yeah. But it's still a tricky game. Still a tricky game. You look went there and done the business and it looked really comfortable for you, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, saw bits of it. and well, actually saw quite a lot of it, actually. Um, I watched it back. Uh, ZX, just for me, probably our best signing, him and Mendy at the moment. Ah, Thiago Silva as well. Them three are the standouts at the minute. Yeah, Thiago's um, looking good, isn't it? Yeah, he's 36 years old. You know, he's four clean sheets in five games. Yeah, as you keep uh, telling me, every every time you get a clean sheet, you will message me clean sheet, Mendy clean sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mendy's Mendy's on fire, isn't he? At the minute as well. So you looking know, like a good he, goalkeeper, man. Good he goalkeeper. is. To be fair. You know, I think his distribution can be better. You know, as a goalkeeper, I watch like players like that. But in terms of you know, he's, he's confident. He comes for crosses. He's he don't really speak English well, but he's done really well. So like. I think that helps that, you know, that Zuma and Thiago Silva can speak French. So it helps him at the back there. Obviously, he's got Kante in front of him as well. I think Lampard's starting to stumble across his, his best team, you know. And I think it took him a while because no one was fit, you know. Like, we come in, Havertz didn't have a preseason. Werner was a bit iffy in the beginning. He's starting to score goals now. But he didn't, uh, he didn't start, though. Fit. Werner didn't yeah, start. Yeah, he did. He did. Pulisic got injured in the warm-up. Yeah. 
So, um, oh, it was yeah, I think, warm up. He got injured. Yeah, yeah, Pulisic got injured in the warm up. So, uh, so now he's been out for ten games already this season, Pulisic. So, for me, he was that one of our most exciting player last year, and now he's mm. he's been he's very injury prone. So, I hope he gets gets better soon because obviously, you know, we need the strength and depth in that position. Uh, I think Lampard's realised Reese James is our best right back. Mm. Chilwell's done really well. Yeah. Um, Kovacic, I watched him in the week in the in the Champions League game on Wednesday on Tuesday or Wednesday it was, and uh, he just didn't seem like he was the Kovacic of last year, you know, like he was he was missing something. And when Kante came on, it just gave the players a bit more of the freedom in front of him, gave a bit more freedom to do what they were doing. And I think he come off at one nil with like fifteen minutes left, and we won four nil. So I don't know. I think. Um, I think Lampard's just stumbling across. I think for me, Havertz is is top draw for me. You know, he hasn't scored many goals, but I mean, the way he carries the ball up from the mid, in the midfield, uh, he's a very intelligent footballer. Uh, I think I think we've actually got a really good squad, and I think the minimum for us should be challenging for the title. I think uh, so, especially in a season like this. Yeah, especially seasons like this. I think you know, I think Ziyech was one. You know, I think he's twenty eight years old. I think a lot of people. We're questioning us paying the money for someone, obviously, with not that much resale value in terms of his age. And yeah, because I don't think Chelsea go down that route anymore. You know, we got to try and go under 25. I think ZX, someone we've got in to win now, you know, and I think he's he's delivering at the minute. You know, he's played two games, he scored two goals now, two starts. And I think, um, I think he from him for me, him and Thiago Silva and Mendy have been our best free signings. So what would your what would your best team be? be? Because obviously me and you have spoken about this and I know that Jorginho for you would be in your team or have if you we play, if we play a free, if we play in a free in midfield, I think Jorginho has to play because um he's the one that will link between the midfield and defence. I think we haven't got anyone better than Jorginho to do it. I don't that's not saying Jorginho is unbelievable. And to be honest, I think Partey probably does it better. Yeah. At, being the link between the whole the defense and the midfield, you know, to get it and then play forward balls in between the lines for the tens and the eights. But I think if you're going to play a if you're going to play a three, I'd play Jorginho. You play a, play a two and then a three one. I think I don't think you could play Jorginho mm. in that because I just think that in a two four two three one, Jorginho has to do a lot of running out wider. Yeah, do you know what I mean to track the eights that are coming on each yeah. side. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Very tactical, but I hope you get what I'm saying. Yeah, like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Too, so too. I think if if you if you, if you play a 4-3-3, a three, three, you put Jorginho as a holder, you have the two eights. Jorginho doesn't really need to run as much because he has the two eights that will do the running on the outside. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if you play a 4-2-3-1, Jorginho has to do that running on the mm. outside. Because yeah. we have two eights and then a 10. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Jorginho can't do that running. It's too slow. Yeah, and he's very, he got the legs for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas he's a partner has the legs yeah. to play in a two or a, or a three. Yeah. So yeah. I think, so so for me, if you if our best team, I would go with in a three. You probably have Jorginho, Kante, and Havertz. But I think at the moment Lampard's loving the um, he's loving mountain there, isn't he? Love. I was just about to say he loves a mount. He's loving mountain there. <laughs> Mount's, to be fair to Mark, da- Mark's England's darling at the moment, isn't it? So. Yeah. He's a. He, I think he'll. And to be fair. He'll probably start in the Euros. You know what I mean? I think Southgate loves him. So, mm. you know, I, I think Foden for me is probably technically better, but he doesn't play as much. Do you know what I mean? So, Grealish. Grealish, I love Grealish, but I just don't know if Southgate I trusts don't him. Don't trust him. Oh, no, no, we know Southgate. Him. Southgate's got an issue there for some for some reason. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just speaking like I'm Southgate. So if yeah, I'm Southgate, yeah. you're probably going to play Mount because he's the one that's probably the most reliable. Well, probably yeah. if you tell him to jump off a cliff, he's going to do it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. technically, in technical ability, I'll probably have Grealish above him and Foden. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but but Mount, I think he's done really well. I think if you play, I think Lampard stumbled across the the old. He's gone with Kante and sitting with Mount and have Mount and Havertz as the two eights. Yeah. Mount and Havertz cover a lot of, a lot of ground. Then Ziek on the right, I think Pulisic on the left, and I think he'll go Werner up front. Right. Okay. Uh, which I think personally is is probably is right up there as well, you know, in terms of, I think that's our best team. I think I was saying that in the beginning. That's probably our our best team. Maybe with Havertz and maybe with Havertz. If you play a four two three one, you put Havertz in the 10, Kante and um, Kovacic or Kante and Mount, Havertz in the 10. Go with Eva to be fair. Like I think he's got a, he's got a, 
bundle of options, hasn't he? Like for all the money you spend, you had to have a lot of options. Exactly. So um, and you know, and this is why Lampard worry because Lampard's going to get judged now. You know, and he. Yes. I this think, is I what I say to you, though, and you yeah, say yeah, differently. Yeah. This is what I say but, to but you. I was, yeah, yeah, but I was, I, but I think in terms of the media, you know, I mean, the press, like in terms of like, I think that, I think Chelsea will give him this year to get the team gelled, probably make another sign in next summer, and then the season after we have to win it. Like we can't be fighting for top four, top three, top two in yeah. our third season. We have to be winning it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And there's an interesting thing developing that Nagelsmann at Leipzig. Is yeah. probably going to leave at the end of the season. So, you know, if Lampard doesn't do well this year, I think, you know, Chelsea might actually go in for him. Hey, you Maybe know, United Chelsea, as well. are, Chelsea are cutthroat when it comes to that, boy. Yeah, so. it's just, I think with Lampard, there's a lot of sentiment there. You know what I mean? A bit with Oli, a bit like Oli at United. You know what I mean? But, like they're legends but the, of the club. But the, sen- the sentiment is that, with, um, is that with Abramovich or is it with anybody else in the hierarchy? Yeah, because this is the, this is the difference. With, with Chelsea, we, this is what I said before. We don't know Abramovich wants titles. It's, Abramovich is about this winning title life. Yeah. Like he's not, he's not a, but with United, it's different, isn't it? We're just all about the money and the stuff. But, but with United as well, I think you have a lot of pundits on TV that, that love Oli. Yeah, it's him. annoying. It's annoying. You've they got don't, Rio, they don't want to see. Rory Key, they don't want to get the manager. Oh, nah, no, of course not. They don't. And, and, that, and that's another thing because if they sack him, probably the hierarchy is thinking we sack him, they could turn on us. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Roy Keane today, Keane, like Kane, Roy Keane, 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 Keane was making man. valid points and Roy Keane just didn't want to listen to him, kept interrupting him, <laughs> trying to intimidate him, trying to, and I'm just like, and, and Jamie Redknapp was making valid points and even, I don't know, I can't remember the host name, but even he was making valid points, trying to, trying to say, but isn't it the manager's job or da, 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 and the, the way Roy Keane was just the Doesn't want to hear a bar of it. Yeah, yeah, and, and, it's I, and I keep of, saying, United pundits. yeah, man, it's like, and I'm sure you would agree, Lawrence, because you play professional football. If when the manager does well, he takes the credit, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, set up well, the right personnel did this well, did that well. So then, why when a team does badly, it then is all about the players? It can't, for me, it can't work like that all of the time. If you if you praise Oli in midweek for what we did against RB Leipzig, calling it an Oli masterclass, tactical masterclass, then how all of a sudden a few days later the players are all crap? Do you know what I'm saying? It, it yeah, 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 yeah. You know what it is, Sam? Um, I think I think I think, but this is why I think Lampard is like tactically on a different level to Oli because we go to United yeah. and we know yeah. and we know what we want to get there. We mm. we know we need to get a point at least. Hit them on the counter. Yeah. Lampard plays three at the back. We look, we look solid defensively. Yeah, yeah. And then we go to Burnley, where, who are not probably going to trouble us as much. We go four, we go very attacking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mount Havertz, Kante, Ziek, very attacking away at Burnley. Yeah. You know what I mean? He knows. Goals. And we get three points, three goals. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Out of Oli, the- it's probably gone, we've got a good result with this this formation against Red Bull Leipzig, which is which was fantastic. Was it 5-0? Yeah. But, but Arsenal's a different proposition. you got to like... You've yeah. got to tweak it a little bit. You can't yeah. just play the same thing. That's very old school. Do you know what I mean? I was, very old I was going to say, who do you reckon out of the three? Lampard, Arteta, Oli, who's the best tactical manager or the ta- best tactician? For me, personally, I think Arteta. I think okay. Arteta. Because I think Arteta is very... He, he's, he's like Lampard as well. But considering Lampard had, you could say, a better squad when he first came, mm. I think, I think Ar- Arteta's... Arteta's got a better, um, has, has tactically done, done better. I don't think Lampard's record against the top six is nowhere near as good as Arteta's, which shows Arteta is, is, is very good at uh, identifying the opposition's Yeah, um, yeah weakness. Yeah. Uh, strengths and weaknesses, you know, to mm. nullify the strengths and directly exploit the weaknesses. You know what I mean? Lampard mm. had a couple of great ones last year against Spurs, you know, and, you know, against, uh, against City as well. When we lost, I think it was 2-1 away. But we were unbelievable there. Yeah, the first yeah. Time less than fifty percent possession mm. since Pepper's been manager in, managing in England. So, mm. I think Lampard has done well, but I think Arteta has got the blueprint per, to perfection at the minute at Arsenal. Now, I think when you sign Tierney, you never expect him to be a centre half. Been unbelievable there. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? he's, so, he's identified it. But I think you see with Lampard, I think you're you're correct in your assumption. I think this season they're probably going to give him a blight. 
I think as, as long as as long as you're getting some decent results and you're, and you're in and around there and it's not a case where you're lagging behind, they'll give him another season. I think the following season would be like the crunch time because yeah. you'll be presented with like, I listen, we've given you your squad now. Like, what yeah. are you doing with it? I think he's done well to identify the midfield because at one point we're thinking, to us, how is he going to fit Werner, Z- uh, Zayek, uh, Havertz? Like, how is he going to fit all of these guys? But he's figuring it out. So... I think I think he's already. I think it shows right. a lot about him as well, you know, to get those those players in. You know, I think yeah, all of them yeah. have said when they've come in. You know, I spoke to Lampard one time, and it was enough for me to come to Chelsea. You know, so it shows that he's got a lot of pedigree in the game as well. Yeah, you know, oh, he's yeah. probably coming from Derby as well. Definitely, I just don't know if Oli has that. You know, what I mean, in terms of that kind of, oh, I want you in. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna treat you this like this, this that. Do you, you know, do you know what? Do league. you know what else I like yeah. as well? with the goalkeeping situation and how he's dealt with it. Yeah. As, 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 well, as well as he's, you know, tried to protect him. And I feel like um, Kepa's also kind of understood his situation because I think he made a comment uh, not too long ago that, you know, he's a young goalkeeper. Although he's going through this at the moment, it is something that will help in terms of his development, his experience. He understands where he's at in his career right now. But at the same time, bringing in a goalkeeper and not being stuck and hung up on Kepa's price tag because a lot of managers would have come into this yeah. and buckled, buckled under that because you're thinking, right, we've, we've paid 70 million for this keeper. He has to play, you know what I mean? Yeah, but of course. He, he's identified like, listen, if you're not performing, this is Chelsea. It's a big, yeah. big club. No matter if you cost 70 million, you're young. I think the fact that Kepa is young, it still allows for time for him to develop. But why not, bring, why not bring in another goalkeeper to just obviously, like, you know, our situation at Arsenal, we had uh, Leno and Martinez of kind of equal stature uh, you know what i mean so if you're if you're fortunate enough to have those top goalkeepers because most number twos are quite crap if we're to be yeah. honest in it so you got a young goalkeeper that's not really doing it why not bring in someone else and push each other well, a, great I think a, lot of that, a lot of that as well check as well you know it's, it's come from his old club probably checks identified him you know mm. like and uh and check signed, signed up again yeah, yeah, he signed up. That's like an emergency. I can't believe it. I saw a video of him training. I was cracking up, man. But I heard, I hope I heard that Kepa weren't. Up. I heard that Kepa weren't even on um in the, on the team on the squad. Nah, he's injured. He's injured at the minute. Oh, shoulder injured. injury. Yeah, he's injured. Oh, okay. Injured, that that makes sense then. That makes sense. But but to be fair, like I don't think he'll be he'll be anywhere near it. I think Lampard's. But the thing with me as well with Mendy, I don't think Mendy is the answer long term. Okay. As a stopgap for two, three years, I think I don't think you'll find many better. You know what I mean? Mm. Like in terms of because I don't think Mendy will take us to the next level, the elite level in terms of to win the Champions League. You need you need a Neuer, you need an Edison, yeah. you need an Allison, you need a goalkeeper at that level. You know what I mean? Do and I don't think Mendy. I don't agree. Level. I don't agree, man. I don't agree. You think, you, Mendy, you think Mendy's there for the long term? I think I think if you're a quality goalkeeper. That's that's enough. You don't have to be elite. Don't get me wrong. Elite will get you out or or give you that extra bit in certain circumstances. What was it that they used to say? Ten keeper... extra points. Ten huh? points. A good goalie's ten points a season. No, but, no, but some like... quality goalkeeper. Yeah, ten points. I don't think an elite gets you ten points over a quality goalkeeper. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, true. I get what I'm that. saying. You know, sometimes it's your defense as well because the difference exactly. between how when Czech was in was in goal for you guys and you had the likes of Terry and the great defenders you had. Czech weren't getting tested that much, but nah. when he was, he pulled off the he saves, he done what he had yeah, to do. Yeah. When Courtois then became number one and your defence wasn't so great, as as great as Courtois was, when the defence wasn't so great, it showed the holes in Courtois' game. Yeah, of course. So yeah, sometimes yeah. it's a fine balance. Like, you could be an amazing... Like, you know, we've seen De Gea, who's been outstanding, um, not as recent, but, like, where... United didn't have such a great defence and he was doing the bits. So it's just a fine balance on it. We, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think it's a yeah, it's, you're, you're, you're 100% right. Because in, in that in that instance, you probably have to say Thiago Silva's been unbelievable then. Yeah, at his yeah. age, to come in, at it's his age, good not, not speak the language, to come in, 36 years old, been unbelievable. Like, And it just, I think, I, I think if we don't have Lampard, I don't think we get Thiago Silva. And that's my. I, I don't think Oli could get Thiago Silva to United. Do you know what I mean? You think you think he's got the pedigree so I, like that, yeah? I think I think Lampard's got that. He's got that pedigree to go and get. And and obviously, I think as well, being in London helps as well. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. 
yeah, being yeah, in London County. We all do you reckon, to, we all do you reckon Oli lacks pedigree? You reckon Oli lacks pedigree? Of course. But he wouldn't go and sign Cavani, would he, without without that? You know what I mean? But, but, but Cavani, the, another one. The thing is, is Oli, like, as much as everybody... You know, as much as a United fan, we all love Oli, and Oli was a great player for us and everything, but he was never headliner, was he? Oli yeah, of course. Headliner. He scored the winning goal in 1999, but other than that, he was always... The super a, sub. The super sub. Super sub, you know, yeah, yeah. Right, so when you're talking about him over Frank Lampard, Frank Lampard's more recent as well, that has been a consistent player for Chelsea in title-winning teams, Champions League, Europa League. Do you know what I'm saying? Like people mm. know about about Frank, and then I'm sure he gets the backing of Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho loves love Frank and everything like that as well. So, yeah, I I, I agree that I think Frank would have more of a pull, but at the mm. same time, it, it's all about the football as well. And Oli hasn't done anything to warrant. You know, for for big players to say, yeah, I want to go and play for Oli. Because the, another point that I didn't get to make today, which is very important actually, is that today was Oli's hundredth game. Yeah, you need that. Really? You need that hundredth win, man. You it need was, that hundredth game win. His, but it's not even that dash. Today was his hundredth game, and if we're all honest, United fans that love Oli or whoever you are, if we're all honest. Can we say that Manchester United have moved forward under Oli in a hundred games? And from when he from took where from where Mourinho left you? From where Mourinho left from where Mourinho left us, from where he took out not, not even from where Mourinho left us, because yeah, I think that we have improved in terms of the squad yeah, getting at some of the deadwood and, and all the that. style of football. Because yeah. your football with Mourinho was dire. That's yeah. actually horrendous. The football, but let's remember Oli went on the great run when he first arrived. Yeah, and then the rest of that season, our football was dire because we finished the last game of the season losing to relegated. Oh, who was it that we lost to on the last day of the season that had actually been relegated already? The name escapes me at the moment. And then you know we come into last season, and for the majority of last season as well, we were dire. So I just look at us now, and I just think we as a team haven't really progressed in the direction that we would have hoped to. Even under, Oli. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say you've got worse though. I just think you're just very stagnant. You're just very. Yeah, yeah it's the same, isn't it? We go on runs, we go dead. We go on runs, then we go dead. It's like up and yeah. down. One minute we look good, then we look poor. We look good. We yeah, look but this is the same thing you could say for Chelsea as well. You know, like it's the same thing for us. That was a question I was going to ask as well. Like for a Chelsea fan, that's used to obviously having managers upon managers. Like, what is Lampard? The football that Lampard now is playing. Are you happy with it? Is, is he changed anything? Yeah, is yeah, he... yeah. No, no. I see a lot of Chelsea. I've got a lot of Chelsea fans that I follow on on, on Twitter. A lot of people that, that have insight and stuff. And they were saying that, is the football that we play in now that much different to Sarri? Mm. And I, I was thinking, how can you even compare? Sarri's football was, was, for me, as a purist in terms of football, Sarri's football was okay. But it was boring. You know what I mean? It wasn't really exciting. It was we okay. were waiting for Hazard to do something. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. now we haven't got Hazard, yeah, who is yeah. very reliant on one player. If he doesn't show up on that day, we don't win. You mm, know what I mean? Mm. Whereas now we're more fluid, we're more expansive. Uh, we seem like we have a lot more match winners that will, you know what I mean? That that can get you a goal. Especially yeah. now, I think ZX, that one, Havertz is another one, can create something out of nothing. I mean, we're not so reliant on one football. Yeah. So I think with Lampard J, I think he's made the team more expansive, more exciting to watch. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's, I, I, that's probably one I think thing ha- that, that I think has ha- improved. I think Hazard was a bit of a gift and a curse, isn't it? Because it was a situation where when you got such yeah, of a course, player 100%. like that, you, you know, you, you do you do become quite reliant on, on that on that player. But yeah, I see it. I see it now. And, it, and it helped, of course, when we had... It helped, of course, when we had Costa as well, you know, because Costa mm. would occupy the defenders give him so much has so much room to play in you know what i mean it just and and we became a, a very reliant on mm. on hazard towards the end especially you know like we were we came third that year after losing 4-0 to 6-0 to city 4-0 to bournemouth and we came yeah. third and that was literally because i remember one game was playing watford at home 1-0 97th minute hazard beats about four players smacks it bottom <laughs> corner went to one just like it's Hazard, like it's the Hazard yeah, show. Yeah. If you don't turn up, we're not great. Like, but now I think 
if, for example, Havertz don't turn up, we've got Ziyech. He could do something. Yeah, yeah he could got... do something. Do that's I mean? what, we, got that's what we need at Arsenal. We just need someone else that's going to be able to step up, man. We can't just be relying on Aubameyang. And I envy the fact that um, when teams have got more than uh, one. I just think to uh, our days back into the Perez, Lundberg, even Vieira will be chipping in. And we just, we didn't just, at Burkamp, we didn't just rely on Henri up until Henri yeah, was yeah. the only guy. But, um, but, and, and but the, thing is, the thing is, though, um, Dash, and I say this all of the time, you've still got... Aubameyang scores how many goals every single season? All, every single season, he bangs goals. You finish eighth, he's still banging goals. So, but this season, he's not banging goals. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not always down to the personnel. It's also about the system. Like, he's been dragged out wide. And as we've said, Arsenal also not creating chances. That's not, but, that's but not Sam, by accident. Do you know, do you know what it is? That whole narrative this season about the fact that on um on Rina, Aubameyang's not playing centrally. He played a majority of the season out wide. He plays out wide. It's, this is not oh yeah yeah no no I I agree. But so you, I, you was creating chances last year. Otherwise, he, that's why he scored more goals. Aubameyang's not getting chance. He didn't have no chances today, other than the penalty. Do you know what? Even Aubameyang's goals. Yeah, if you even look at his goals last season, they they're all self made chances. He, he, his goals are his goals. We, we don't have anybody that plays him through or does anything like that, apart from maybe David Luiz from the back and stuff like that. So I just feel like maybe in this season, it's just hasn't been working for Aubameyang or maybe it's just one of those things where he's just had a lack of confidence. Even today, he had a chance to do that bending shot that he's been doing, you know, recently. Hey, he and missed he opted- the target. He opted to no. He opted to pass. You know what I mean. So I know he had like, he had one where he missed the target. He where he yeah, bent it round exactly. and he missed the target. Uh, yeah, man. I just think that I just think that um, whilst you are in a situation where you're not creating chances, it can't just be the personnel just ain't because you're just not creating. Yeah, know? it has to be an element that the system isn't working or catered towards. Yeah, we de- Yeah, chances. I agree with that. Something that you we, guys need to work on. Yeah, we, I agree with that. I mean, I mean, like, yeah, you're right in that sense, hundred percent. That you need to, they need to find a system to accompany, like, to accommodate for him. Accommodate, that's it. Yeah, accommodate yeah. the um, the, the Bamiang attacking right Bamiang, yeah, William, Pepe, Lacazette. You know, they've got, they, they actually have got good players. You know, like I was having an argument the other day um, about Everton's midfield and attack or yeah. Arsenal's. Yeah, and I think. If you go player for player, player probably player. Everton's is Everton. probably better. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like in terms of, yeah. because I think they're they're another side that yeah they lost today, but they're they're right on the come up. Then like right? they they could be right up there towards the end of the season. Well, talking I, about just, I just I just worry about right? their defense. I just worry about their defense in terms of, like the center halves. They changed the goalkeeper today, didn't they? I'm a big pick for fan. Been dropped finally. Apparently the other goalie is very good. Um, uh, I'm always yeah. getting on to Lawrence about Pickford, boy. Eh? <laughs> Lawrence, yeah. Lawrence, Lawrence is a madman. He's a professional goalkeeper himself, and he rates Pickford. I'm just like, oh, what is this? this is because he's, he's he's actually good with his feet, like. And I just think, yeah, and in, in the obviously, I think you're right, and I think Mendy is almost trying to change my opinion on the whole game. Mm. Mendy's not as good with his feet, but yeah. he makes saves when you need him to. Yeah. Comes for crosses. Yeah, Kepa, Listen, much that's... better with his feet. He don't bail you out. Yeah. At the end of the day, I... you need your goalkeeper to bail you out, didn't you? I so... don't, I don't, I don't think Chelsea's got anything to worry about this season, man. I think you lot will do all right. I think you'll be in and around. Um, I the only thing, the only thing that you would have anything to worry about is the fact that will you be challenging for the league? And we all can't win the league. You know, what I mean, I think Liverpool are way ahead of us. City will probably put be pushing once again, and then it's for the rest of us to be battling and. I think let's, maybe not this season. I think it'll be next season for you guys. Let's segue into Liverpool then, because you just said that Liverpool are way ahead of... Now, you said us. I don't know why you said us, because Arsenal are definitely not in the reckoning here. But just, li- just li- everybody Liverpool, behind the pack, innit? Everybody, we Liverpool, don't know what's going to happen this season. Lawrence, do you think that Liverpool are way ahead of everybody from what you've seen uh, this season? When, when I watch them against us... I watched the whole 90 minutes. I was fuming at the end of the game, mainly because Lampard played Christensen, which I'm not a fan of. And then he got sent off and we was 0-0 at half time, and we lost 2-0. And 
and Kepa made an error and all that. They were, they looked good against us, but they didn't look like they were going to score at nil nil. You know, it took yeah. until the temp. You know, when a we man had ten down, minutes. didn't you? Yeah. yeah, with a man down, the whole second half. They then they looked like they were. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, then obviously the Villa disaster happened, which is a one-off. Like, I don't think they're way ahead of everyone. I think they're going to drop you, quite a few points this season. You know what I, I mean by saying? You know what I mean by saying way ahead? And probably this at the moment, six, seven games in so far, um, they haven't been showing it. But when I say way ahead, I mean in a sense like their adjustments is light. They just need maybe one player. You pull it in there and it makes a massive difference. For example, you know, bringing in Thiago and stuff like that. You can see the difference that it's made. Obviously, losing Van Dijk at the moment is a, a, a massive hole for them. But I just feel like they're in a position where they don't need to make a lot of changes for them to be competing at that very top level. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's what they, I mean, being way they, ahead. They've got it us. perfect as well. Yeah, they've got it perfect you know what I mean? as well in terms um, of like Firmino and the nine. They've got it perfect still, with that. Yeah, look at Diego, Diego Jota now that they've brought in. Like those kind of players there, you just bring in one player where our teams, you probably need to bring maybe two or, or three to be like... People okay. were people were criticising that signing as well, the Jota one. I mean, that was a, It was a scoring. cool signing because he's scoring and, he, and, he's, and he's relieving uh, Firmino of that, of that burden of not scoring goals. So they can do a situation where you still can keep that balance of your front three that's played together for a long time. And then when you need to take... Uh, Firmino out of the firing line and bringing Jota is still scoring goals and that's giving him confidence so when I'm saying that they're way ahead that's what I mean is in a sense like none of our teams is going to be able to compete throughout the whole season at that top level um, like Liverpool and yeah I, I still think that they, they're, in, they're in pole position to, to win the league I don't think anybody else has got anything in their tank to, to, to do anything uh, of that level I disagree, man. I disagree because who I've who watched, would you say who I've would watched, you say? Is... I've watched I've watched Liverpool play. No, I, I'm not saying that I disagree that Liverpool aren't going to win the league again. Obviously, they're going to be favourites and they are the champions. They're they're obviously going to be in a better position than the rest of us. Do you get what I'm mm. saying? But you said that they're way ahead. I, I don't believe that. From what so, I, Sam, for me watching remember... them, for me watching them play this season. They they do not look like the Liverpool of last season. And okay, the so they, the see the season that they they um came second to City and had their best better season than their championship season. Their championship season they started off slow as well. So you know I mean we said we 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 criticized Liverpool for not being at that level that they they, they finished second at. And they started off slow in their in their championship they, they season. They, they, and, they, and then they adapted. Didn't lose, they didn't lose seven two. At home to Aston Villa. Yeah, I mean, but then at, at, the sa- at the same time, we're not we, we, we're not playing games behind closed doors and all of these kind of different things and but stuff exactly, like that. So but but we a, are we are playing it's, games it's, behind it's, closed doors now. There's, there, so there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. There now. There's a there's a load of teams that there's been a load of like mad results and, and for, I don't think anybody is exempt from these mad results. But what I'm saying is like because I feel a team, like a team that's way ahead would be exempt from these mad results because you said that nah. they're way ahead. Yeah, they, of course they are. They're still way ahead. They're still way ahead of City. They're still way ahead of our club. Who's who's who right now? Would you say is rivaling? Um, if that's even a word, who do you reckon is Liverpool's direct rival so far? I I think I think that Spurs rival could rival Liverpool this season. I think Chelsea cool. could rival Liverpool this season, and I think City could. You know, if City, as much as I think City can struggle, if they just get it right as well. They could, but definitely Spurs and Chelsea. Definitely. So Spurs last, Chelsea. last, last. I can't. Season. I can't say that I've watched Liverpool and I thought they're light years ahead of Spurs or light years ahead of Chelsea or light years. Ahead. No, I don't agree with that. I watched so them la- again play play West Ham. N- nothing great last what week. They, but what did they, great. But apart from apart from there was a period of time when Liverpool started last season, they didn't start off great. They didn't lose like the, the seven twos, as you're saying, but they didn't start with great. They were winning then they had, the game. Then, they were winning they had, the game. So they're doing that right now. They've just they've, lost they've one game. Won, they've not won they've every single one, game. They've lost one game. 
Okay. 16 points. Well, that's that's, that's <laughs> the other thing. You <laughs> thought that Leicester were going to challenge the league last season. I did. I did. We, so I we, did. We, but you're we, saying, we you're all saying, think things. It doesn't mean course. it's going to be right. Of so, course. So you but think, I, I, that, I, I you just, think I, Liverpool are way ahead. I disagree. It's as simple as that. So, but but we're making our points in it. We're, ma- we're making our points in it. So I just wanted to hear from from your stance points and who you think is obviously of rival. Yeah, it. And you said it. cities. You said um, I said and Spurs, City, Spurs, City. Spurs. Spurs. Okay. Spurs especially have looked as good as anybody this season. Well, in spells. Because, huh? In spells. Thank you. Like, let's not get gassed up. It's, it's, but it's, but Liverpool are looking good in spells. Yeah, yeah Liverpool. Saying, like, he, the point, the point he, the, what he said was, is that they're way ahead of everybody. And I don't agree I, that they're way ahead. That's what I said. I don't think they're way ahead. But they're, 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 they're are, they are the best like, team in the league. Look at <laughs> Yeah, no, regardless but, uh, they're not they're not as good as they were last year it, exactly and that's all i said i didn't say that i don't think they're going to win the league i didn't say that they're not the best team i said that i don't believe that they're way you know, ahead that's and, and why and why i said they're ahead because they don't even need to be at the level that they were last season and look at them right now so if that's not who if, if people if teams were close to them right now then i would say oh uh liverpool are not ahead there's 16 points already some of us are languishing still on 12 points and stuff there's that's, 16 that's, points. That's, that's and then <laughs> That's who, us. Fe- look, look, who's second? No, we have who's second, huh? who's second Everton, right now? Ever, Ever, Everton have 13. Everton who's second? Everton have second. Second, but 13. Come on, second. guys, man. Let, yeah, let, Wolves let, have 13, I think. Regardless, regardless of what you think in terms of like how they, their level, they can still perform their, Liverpool's like, you know, r- rubbish compared to ours. It's still very good. Oh yeah, yeah. You know Obviously, yeah. Of course. That's the yeah, point yeah. I'm trying to make. Like, let's 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 not let's cut through the fat of, of everything. Their level is still above. It's still above us. It's they're still a way ahead of us. And what I said is like them adding like a Jota, a Thiago, one or two signing. Like that's the difference. We still need to, or our club still need to add like two, three players to even reach that level. You know what I mean? No, we're, not, we're, 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 talk, we're talking about where they are now. That's what we're talking and about. Their where first they are now. sixteen and, points, and, and, and I do not believe that they're way ahead. <laughs> and they still find they still find new ways to win. I don't believe that but, they're way ahead. Football is always about fine margins. Football is is, is fine margins. hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because we could be talking, you know, Spurs dropped what? They dropped what? What are we saying? Four points they dropped in oh. in two games. You know, against West Ham and against Newcastle, which on another day they get all three points in both of those games, and then they're four points better off. Football is about fine margins. As I said, it hates me to say it, but Spurs have looked as good as as anybody else this season, and I don't believe Liverpool are going to walk the league the way they walked it last year. It, it's just yeah, I agree with that. They won't win it by 30, 40 points. No, you know, I, I don't. Yeah, I and, don't and really Lawrence, you 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 deep down believe that you've got a chance of winning the league this year. So yeah, you, you I wouldn't think, think that if you thought Liverpool were way ahead. Let's no, no, I think the league is. I think it's a very good thing for English football that the league is is, is open. Do you know what we mean? don't want to see that again. We don't. <laughs> we don't want to see thirty points ahead. Nah, last you know season I mean? was ridiculous. And we don't want to see that. Everybody again. that I speak to would say, you know what? If this is the season to win it, this is the season to win it for even a Man United to try and win it this season for an Arsenal, for Spurs, no, no, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they wouldn't be saying that if they thought that Liverpool were way ahead. Do you get what I'm saying? They wouldn't. They, yeah, yeah. Everybody feels that they've got a chance this year because of the way the season is. I don't believe Liverpool are way ahead. Now, am mm. I saying that they're not going to win the league? I'm not saying that. I, I wouldn't go and bet money against Liverpool winning the league now. But I do believe that other teams have got a chance. And I wouldn't mm. think that if I thought Liverpool were way ahead. That would be stupid of me to think that, you know, me worrying that Jose is actually going to win the league for Spurs. If I thought that Liverpool were way ahead, I wouldn't have that worry. I'd be like, nah, Liverpool are going to win this easily. I don't believe mm. that. I don't believe that. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I I, I still very... I feel like Liverpool's level is just a, a cut above us. And even despite even um, not having the likes of Van Dijk, it's, it's just proven that they can still ground up results. So you and, would bet uh, £100 that Liverpool win the league? Um, yeah, I'll be confident enough to 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 do that, but I don't I don't bet or gamble. Okay, but, no, yeah. no, that's fine. But yeah. I, but you would. But that's my confidence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair yeah. enough. See, I wouldn't. That yeah. me, me personally, I, I wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? I just feel. I, I just can't. I can't see. I can't see anyone to to really have a consistent run like Liverpool. I think Liverpool have one. They've got the experience of winning it, 
Um, they've got the players there. And the game, what was their last game against? Um, well, they West Ham. West Ham, they beat. Where they played against West Ham. Uh, that game there, maybe another team, they would have either drawn or lost that game. But Liverpool found a way to, you know, bringing in the Jota, bringing in like, someone like Shakiri. Yeah. Shakiri was looking like De Bruyne in that game. So it just shows you the type of confidence that those type of fringe players have got that can go into that Liverpool side and make a difference like that. Like, I, I, I think I, this I, is what I say. This is what I say about United. That like Liverpool have a great squad, 20, 22 players. Yeah, man. And they can bring in from nowhere. You look That's at United, security. Daniel James, like... Yeah, man, come on. Cubs too big, compare this, Cubs too nah, big. Compare it. You know you what? what I, mean? I think one thing that people have criticised Liverpool is that their squad is, is, isn't as great as it should be. No, but, they, um, but they've got but people they, like Shaqiri yeah, he was a star. A star. He just came you know what in. What I mean? he just came in for one game for, nah, for a moment and couple got an assist. He's not couple like game, couple games. Is doing all right right he now. Been, couple he games. ain't been doing. Yeah, check, like, yeah, check, why now? Why now? Them they've got they've got they've got probably the best midfield. One of the best midfields in the in the league. They got Thiago Henderson, player of the year last year. Why now? Them Fabinho uh, before his injury. Fabinho. They've they've got they've got good strength and depth. You know what I mean? Added Thiago. Yeah, Ali Thiago, they've got Jota on the, out wide. They could, Jota can play left, oh, can play man. right. Jota's, can play a up front. Jota's a quality player. Look, and, and then you, it goes to show, like, if you feel Jota and you've got the off, opportunity to go to be a star at United, this is where I think the problem with the recruitment is again. Jota, what would he rather be? A bit part player at Liverpool playing 20 minutes here and there or being a star at United week in, week out playing? You obviously mm. want to be playing week in, week out with a manager that trusts you. Why don't mm-hmm. United go for that? Do you know what I mean? And this is where the problem is, like, with United, I, I, in my I opinion. That's a little bit, like, you. we can't be compared to Liverpool at the moment. Like, in if we're talking about no, no, but way I, ahead, Liverpool are way ahead of Manchester United, you know what I'm saying? Of course, in, of course right now. But I'm way. saying, as a player, you want to play. He's not going to start every game at Liverpool, yeah, but especially play, not the big ones. A player, a player, you know, the season's a long season. So someone like Jota, he, he's, he's getting a lot of minutes already. He's yeah, getting a true, lot of minutes. True. And not being funny, he's performing... Better than than what Firmino is because he's doing what Firmino can do in there, and he's actually able to add goals into there as well. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying it's gonna get because I've spoken to a few Liverpool fans that are just like they would rather see Jota start than Firmino. You know, he's he's now highlighting the 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 thing that Firmino isn't isn't able to do, and he can still play the role in the system. But I I, I just think that. Any player at the moment is going to choose a Liverpool over a Man United in, in every sense of the world. Yeah, of course, of course. You know and, but I mean? this is what I was just saying. Obviously, you brought the likes of Spurs and other teams. And this is where I just keep, we've just rang out the names of players at like Liverpool. And like once again, Liverpool's team is it's ahead of Spurs in, in, in every aspect. So to say like the teams that Spurs are close to Liverpool, they, they, they will be challenging. I don't know, man. I don't, I, I don't see it, but. Yeah, well, yeah. you thought that Leicester were yeah, yeah, yeah. last we, season. We, and then, we, but, then, but then look at their this, team. Look at their team the, compared to everybody else's. This, this is the pundit game, man. We say things and sometimes... Yeah, but I'm yeah, just saying, you're contradicting yeah. yourself there because you're talking no. about squads and teams not being up to the scratch of this. But then when you look at Leicester's squad, their squad obviously ain't up to the level, but you still believe that they were going to challenge... They were title challengers, which is what you was telling me last season. So... Of course, you know of saying? course. As, as, uh, first and foremost, I said that they will infiltrate the top two. You said they were then, title yeah. challengers. No, 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 no. Let's, let's go back. Arguing. Let's go, let's we go were back. arguing for time. Let's you was like, why are, they, why are they not <laughs> considered title challengers? But you were telling <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Nah, but I just, I, yeah, just just obviously, other than that, I just think I think Liverpool right now, it, although they're, they're probably not, at, they're definitely not at the standard that they were last season, but they're still ahead. They're still Way ahead, man. All opinion. right, so let us know, people. Liverpool, are they way ahead of everybody? Are they going to win the league this year as well? What have you made of their start so far? Yes, they are top of the league um, and they do keep grinding out results because they beat West Ham 2 1 this week, um, Sheffield United 2 1 last week. And, and again, both performances were nothing special, but they did get the W. So let us know what your thoughts are on that. Um, one of their potential challengers, Man City, got a, a 1-0 away win to Sheffield United this week. Um, mm. What did you guys, I'm not sure if any of you that watched the game, um, what do you make of City this season? Obviously, Aguero is out again. Um, again, they... Do you know what? It's, 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 it's weird to see City like this, isn't it? 
it's, <laughs> it's like it's like they really took a thumping and like they're just recovering, holding their ribs, <laughs> just walking down the road. Like, <laughs> but you still know that they got the caliber. You still know that they got the the manager that's capable of doing things. But I think there's one of them ones where the big bad bully's been exposed, like. And now he's walking back in the playground and no one's really giving him that same respect. Yeah. Like, you got bust up, man. You got banged up. So what? you can't talk this talk no more. So yeah, I think yeah. that's their situation right now. It's just like, you still know that they're going to do bits on any given day. You know, they still got the quality. But the fact that no Aguero, no Jesus, um, you know what I mean? Obviously still struggling in terms of the defensive line. They still haven't identified their problem areas that had them lagging for so many points they should do they spent 60 mil on a centre back oh, didn't they? I know I but the one well, he's just playing now player, with Laporte yeah. in there he's playing with, with Laporte in there they, yeah. they're looking quite solid to be fair to them at the moment Diaz and, and Laporte Walker's ever present as well doing well um, and then left I think I saw Zinchenko playing the other day I can't remember who was playing yeah. this weekend um, mm. but you know what yeah again for me City don't look like nothing special and they, they dug out a result against Sheffield United, but Sheffield United weren't weren't great at all. You know, it's big struggles for them, big struggles. They've what been struggling ever since. Second, they call it what do they call it? Second season syndrome, don't they? Mm. Like, you come up, you have a wonderful year in the first year. You think it's easy playing in the Prem, and then second year, you're struggling. Think, their problem, the, their problem, their problem started when um uh what's it post lockdown? Yeah, as as, yeah. As soon as they didn't have any any bite behind them, any fans, and I, I don't know if that's yeah. really affected them, but since that kind of magic has gone for them, it's just like they've just dipped. And I don't know, man, about Brewster, like whether he's made the right move going there, man. The good I thing think for about- him it is the right move for me. For me, I think it's the right move. Yeah, I think he's going to get minutes. He's having, yeah, because for him, he's going to get minutes playing in the Premier League. It will show him what he's about. Do you know what I mean? Like how good he is. He went to the championship. He's too good for that. So then he's in a, he's in a limbo where does he stay at Liverpool, have it comfortable, play here and there, or does he go the other way, go and play for a team in the Prem, but week in, week out where he's the main man and that can show where you, where you are. Do you know what I mean? I reckon they should have, it should have been a loan move personally. Yeah. I think, I think going to Sheffield United and he actually has been sold. Obviously there's an option to buy, but going to Sheffield United right now, if it was like under no, like normal circumstances and how well Sheffield United were playing, yeah. he might have the ability to shine there. The team is playing well, yeah. even if he's not able to contribute a lot, but it's still under a good light. But right now, if Sheffield United is struggling and if his performances are not great, it just, he's tarred with the same brush. And then yeah, so like, you're, you're talking what, like almost in like a Tammy Abraham sort of situation. Yeah, like, like and then, and, and, you know what I mean? And then yeah. if he went on loan, at least he can go back and then they can reevaluate his situation. They've sold him. And now Liverpool don't have the obligation to buy him. Like if, if it doesn't they work out for him, back, if, if, they, they, they can, can buy him back. But if it doesn't but work out, they'll be like, no, yeah, no, they'd be like no, we've yeah. already got the money for him. It's not like he's, he's pulling up trees. So uh, uh, it's a difficult one. Yes, he, he's going to be at a Premier League club. If, if let's say, for example, Sheffield United got relegated, he's still at a top club. He still might be able to move around a little bit. But I just feel that fall from grace from being at Liverpool. But at some point, hit. at some point, for him personally, he's going to have ambitions to play yeah, yeah. for England, to play. So he needs yeah. to play. You know I mean, he has to play. Yeah. Hopefully, it's a I, I agree. I agree with what you're saying there, Lawrence. I, the reason why I said it was, is, was, was what Dash was saying. Because I watched the game and I just saw him just running around, running around. You running get what I'm around. saying? Yeah. And I started to feel sorry for him. And I was thinking, I don't want him to go down with this ship. And then his reputation goes down mm, the toilet. His, exactly he, that. He then starts, he, you know, mentally. No, I, don't, starts I, to affect I don't think he will go. I don't think he'll go. Because the same thing happened to Tammy Abraham. Didn't score many at um, Swansea. He played to the Prem, didn't he? He went to Swansea. Yeah, yeah. Didn't score many. They got relegated. But this difference, he went on loan. He goes to go on loan to Villa in the champ. Yeah. yeah. The season after, fires them up into the Prem. Yeah. And then 
now look at him. He's now a, yeah. a I, Chelsea I, player. Do you know what I, I mean? I totally, I totally agree with the fact that he had to go and get minutes and play first yeah. team, whether yeah. it be yeah, I can see, I can see, the, I can see you why you say that. It's just the fact better. that he alone would have been better because then Liverpool could have then obviously brought him back and then be like, okay, it's not worked for you at Sheffield United. Then we can think to yourself maybe another Prem another, team or maybe yeah. Championship. Get your get your minutes, you know, bide your time, develop once again as a player. Then we can bring you back. Obviously, we know it's very difficult to break into that Liverpool team. That front three is cemented. But yeah, I, I feel like it's almost like a case where it's like we've kind of just let you go now. Go and do your own thing. If you do well, then we can buy you back. But if you don't do well, the reins are off. The lease is off. Yeah. You're gone. You know Sheffield I mean? United, I just don't rate them, man. And I, and I didn't rate the football they played last season. And I don't, I don't know how Brewster fits in to this. Yeah, like that. Is, <laughs> from Liverpool, like the, how you lot play, you're yeah. going to Sheffield United. Like the, 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 you know, like sometimes you, you think, think to yourself, for okay, me, you had Palace after him, didn't he? I think Palace was a better move, man. Yeah, you know what I mean, this is what I'm. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you like a ball, a ball playing uh, player, or whatever, and then Leeds were in the championships, and then you like we we saw we sent in Ketia to Leeds because he probably fits a similar like kind of football yeah, yeah. style. But you're from Liverpool. You go to Sheffield. Where is the correlation with your yeah. that that football? I don't know, man. It's it's a bit of a weird one. Yeah, man. I hope he does well. I like I like him. I yeah. think he's a I think he's a huge talent, man. So hopefully, you know, he did. Yeah. Have a Just don't want players like to get lost here. That's it. Lost, lost in, lost in uh, the system now. In the system, know, yeah. United have a bad season, and then he gets dropped for a few games because he's not starting, and then do you know what I mean, and see what happens. But go from there. Uh, yeah, man. But Sam, quick, quick, yeah. on on because we just touched on um on um Everton and uh, the goalkeeping situation, man. What did you think about the fact that he was on a bench against I, Newcastle? I was, bit, man? I was a bit baffed, if I'm honest, because Pickford. yeah, because I heard I didn't see last week's game, but I heard that the whole team was poor. But I didn't hear anything that he done. I didn't hear that he done anything. But so he's I'm... back against you guys. That's the crazy thing. So he got left out for Newcastle, but then Ancelotti came out to say that he's gonna be he's gonna be playing. Against United, oh, so like, that. why? Yeah, so it's like, why would you? Yeah, why would you drop him for this game? Oh, and he big... looked baffed. Maybe, well to the the, maybe to give the other the other guy a game against Newcastle. I, I against, but I don't. I don't think that the actually. I don't know because this this league. I don't think it's one of them leagues where you can just drop <laughs> people for a game. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean, you need to win every game. Like, yeah. especially know, not maybe the they didn't win. And they, and they didn't, didn't win. win. Yeah. So like, Yes, let's get it's into that one. one. Newcastle beat them 2-1. Um, and to be honest, I I struggle with the way um, Newcastle play, man. Like, they're just ultra defensive. <laughs> like, just, they've got no they've got ambition. Brilliant player, though, isn't they? St. Maximins. Oh, mate. Yeah, but even, he's just he, he's just signed a new contract in the order. Like he, he, he doesn't receive the ball in the right areas. He's He's like... He he needs to be let free. He needs to be given more of a lot. I don't know, man. I was watching it today and I, was, and I was crying out for him to do something, but he just wasn't able to get the ball because of the way that they set up and the way that they play. I remember even seeing Almerion get the ball at one point and he knocked the ball to the left back. Left back knocked it to him. He knocked the ball back to him. He knocked it back to him. And I was like, the goal, like, they just have no <laughs> ambition to, to, to move forward, but they won the game 2 1. But do you think that Bruce is like, and I'll name a few managers. Bruce is like uh, not not too dissimilar to um, not just not style wise, but just in terms of like keeping your team in the Premier League, like your Roy Hodgson, Roy Hodgson the Pulis yeah. of back in the days. Yeah, yeah. These managers Sam that are just Sam Allardyce's. Yeah. These guys have just got their formula that they know. Like, listen, year on year out, we're still going to be a Prem team. We're still going to get this Prem money, and there's no real ambitions. And those managers that are more inclined to be like that, whenever they step out that zone. They all <laughs> yeah, it goes pair. Yeah. yeah, like a Pardew or like I don't know, man. It's crazy. Even Moyes lately is finding a formula for West Ham. So that's Bruce all along, man. He's not he's done it, he's done it all. They're those, the they're time, those managers that like every chairman has on speed dial when they're in the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like realist like realistically, as much as Newcastle will, will see themselves as you know a, a, a top team or they're a big team or whatever, based on their fan base or whatnot, stadium. But they're still small fry and they still need to just do what they need to do. And they've suffered relegation as well. So 
You know what I mean? It's I don't think it's wrong. To, I don't think it's wrong to want to see better football, man. I don't. I don't think it's. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's, it's 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 for them. It's risky, man. It's you know risky. I mean? Yeah, they've been and, I, and I don't, and I don't think the managers like that of that mold actually know what they're talking about in terms of the new style of football. So it's like it's harder for them to adapt to that. So they know what they they know what they are, which they is know what you know are. what it's a, yeah. it's a credit in the, in themselves. Yeah, because. The most important thing in football that what I've learned is yeah. you have to know what you are yeah, and know yeah. who you are and what mm-hmm. you are. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you're if you're someone if you're someone like Partey, and you think you're and you play like a Ozil, it's not going to work. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Let the Ozil be Ozil and let yeah. the Partey be Partey. Do you know what I mean? I you can't you can't play it's... like you're someone else. Do you know what I mean? Unless that's you... like. Unless you get a manager in Newcastle, if they were able to get a manager of the ilk of, of uh, Ancelotti and stuff like that, because these are proven guys, you know to yourself, he's got the pedigree and more likely to do something, um, even like with Rafa, Rafa Benitez and stuff like that, then you might. But if you try and get like a young spring chicken manager that's got the credential, like imagine if Arteta went to Newcastle. It wouldn't work because Newcastle would need a lot. They need those Steve Bruce's to keep that ship steady. They ain't got time to be risking those <laughs> that beautiful football because they're gonna yeah, get relegated. Yeah. And a team like Newcastle need they, Newcastle need their team in the Premier League. Like that, they're that a whole, club, man. There's, there's only one team in Newcastle. So if, yeah, <laughs> if there's no club, Premier League football for them, it doesn't work. So a Steve Bruce is not gonna try and risk trying to play beautiful football, expansive. He's just going to be like, listen, it, it works. We do what yeah. we've got to do. It's like, Sean, like Sean Dyche. That's Burnley, it. It's the same. You know yeah, what I mean? it Burnley, works. Sean Dyche. Formula, it works. It like, works. works. But what they want to do, it works. They upset. Mm-hmm. Like, I sat there and watched. Who did they play the other day on TV? Uh, West Brom. Uh, was it no, Burnley, they played West someone Brom? else. They played someone else. I don't know what the score was. I don't remember. Talking about Burnley. Burnley, yeah. yeah. Like, they played someone yeah, on they TV Spurs, the other day. They lost to Spurs 1-0. Uh, they were at home, yeah? Both yeah. They were at home. Yeah, they lost yeah. I, I sat there and watched that game. And honestly, I could have done millions of things. I'd rather have hoovered the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> gone and done it around the house. Because the way they play, is just, it bores me to death, man. But they, they know what they are, man. Do you know what I mean? They yeah, know that yeah. their centre-back gets it, right? would get on the diag and yeah. win the header for Barnes. Yeah. And Barnes, you go and score it. And that's the formula. You have to respect it. You can't knock it. You can yeah. say you don't like it, but you can't disrespect you can't, it. Do you know why you can't they, knock it? It's because are. year in, year out, they stay in the Premier League. They stay in the Premier Bloody, League. They're still there. Like, like, they, some, they, somehow, Burnley, yeah. they somehow <laughs> start every season, they're bottom of the league, and then like without Boom. from nowhere in March, they're 14th. You're like, how the hell are these man 14th yeah. end the season and pushing Europa League? This is, like, I don't understand it. This year, this illness is going to catch them, Burnley, being it, it, those, it's, those it's teams, it does. Team. Eventually, it does because they, they do run their course. But it's, it's the same it, with the, the same time. They were there forever. Yeah, eventually, yeah. they get stale. Manager ain't able to improve the team. There's only yeah, so just, much. Just, you can it just annoys me. It just annoys me that someone like Burnley have been in the Premier this long and Leeds with Bielsa took that long to get from that league to this league. Yeah. Because, that's Leeds, because they're trying to play the good Leeds football. Are, that's right. Ah, it's, it's probably, yeah, I'm saying. You know what I mean, but. Leeds are infinitely better than the Burnley, man. Yeah, like, I, can't, we, I can't wait till they play each other. Yeah, what are we saying about um, Everton just quickly? Obviously, they've lost two on the bounce now. Remember what I said, Sims? I said, like, their first 11. Yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. Once, once it starts, the creeks and the players are getting injuries or they're not, like, you know what I mean? They're not in the team. What is the next set of players that are going to come into that team? What are they capable of? Yeah. And this way it shows. Well, when your first 11 is great, but then your squad isn't great. And I, I just I just thought I just thought that would be the case for Everton. And I feel like the, as the season goes on and we see those injuries, we see those players that are, are dropping in form. Like, you know, for example, you got like Iwobi on the bench, who he's a decent player, but is he gonna be someone that's gonna be the link with Isco? Yeah, the link with Visco. Yeah, but yeah, and, I think Ancel- and I think, I think Ancelotti <laughs> got the best out of Visco at Real Madrid. So yeah, yeah. yeah but we got to wait till we got to wait till January. By then, a lot of points of could be dropped, and and then yeah, they get course. the resurgence of, of a new player and stuff like that. But yeah, I I think like Ancelotti with his but with his best eleven, he can do bits. He can do he, you know he can cause a lot of teams problems. I never ever saw DCL firing like this either. I never yeah, foresaw it coming. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's been brilliant. Yeah. Like, 
He's been brilliant. So with the first 11, his best 11 that he's got, he can do bits. He can cause teams problems. But as soon as those, those players start dropping out of the squad, it's the ones that are coming off the bench. Can they do it? Because, you know, they've got Bernard, they've got um, Iwobi, they've got... Who else have they got? Sigerson got played today. S- for Sigerson. Sigerson. How long has Sigerson been at Everton? He's not pulling up trees, you know what I mean? So, he was captain today as well. Uh, that's only because he's been there a long time. Cap- cap- captain, but don't start in the best exactly. team. That's what didn't make no sense to me. I'm thinking, how can you be captain this game, but you ain't even get, you ain't even a star? Yeah. So they, they, need, I, they, need, they need a right back. I don't think Coleman's good enough, man. No. You think he's running scores? But, but I, I think, you know what Coleman is? He's the Everton Aspilicueta. Yeah. Reliable, dependable. <laughs> he didn't play today. You know I mean, he? he didn't play. He today. didn't play, no. No, Coleman was, didn't play, totally and, and Dina didn't play either. They had uh, was it Nkuku? Yeah, um, you see what I'm saying. That was so once those players are gone, it's a. But don't get me wrong. I think um, if anybody could get the best out of the, those players, those that first eleven is definitely Ancelotti. Oh um, yeah, hundred percent. Because going there and changing up their system, and and now we're actually saying that Everton are playing football. Like you know, what I mean that you you actually enjoying Everton playing football, and he's not had he's had the same amount of time as Arteta. Like he's been there what ten months, eleven months. Well, they were um, they were before last week and before this week, but yeah, they they we'll <laughs> yeah wait. we're seeing it unravel now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no Richarlison, no Hammers, Ooh. and it's looking a little bit. Well, Hammers injured, yeah. Ames is injured, man. He's, yeah, since international, he's been carrying a knot. Yes. Oh, and he was yeah, actually, he was, oh, actually, he's actually, he's actually meant, to, yeah, he's at, he was actually meant to miss that um, the return game back to the prem, but then obviously on eleventh hour he played, but I was I think, yeah, but I think he um, he might it may have damaged um, the injury further. So, and you know he's already he's already injury prone and he's not really had great. Um, a uh, great injury record. I so. think if they're going to get an injury, I think that's the, probably the best position for them to get one. You know what I mean? You right think? back, left back. Yeah, because um, because if if they got Iwobi that can slot in, obviously Iwobi is nowhere near James Rodriguez, but he's he's a good quality Premier League has pedigree in the Premier League. Mm. I'm like, I've don't never even heard it, of this. Who the hell is the one that's been making them? Yeah, t- that's what I was about to say. I think yeah, like, yeah. I get what you're saying in terms of position wise, but the play itself. He's the one that's been making him tick. So yeah. with him out of the team, there's yeah, not there's not good enough for a player or, yeah. or, or or a different formation or a different system to play in order to cover the cracks. So if we got to move on, gents, because we're gonna have to wrap up in a minute. Um, just quickly, a word on on Spurs and Gareth Bell scored today. What do you what do you make of Spurs so far? Uh, um, yeah, go on, go on, go on. No, go on, Lawrence, go on. I'll go to uh, no, I was just going to say, um, with Spurs, uh, I've read a lot of reports that they weren't at their best today, but it's a good sign that they're winning games. You know, like, good sign Bale scored. After that um, horror show on Thursday, you know, um, <laughs> I think, I think, um, you're, I think you're right in what you say, like, in terms of they'll be, they'll be up there this year. I think Mourinho's, I think he's got players that, you know, he's found his match in Hoiberg. That's his, mm. that's his, you know what I mean? That's, he's that's his, his go-to guy. That's his go-to guy in there. Uh, I didn't even know. They're second the, the, with 14 the, points, Spurs. Yeah, re, 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 Two points Reguilon, the team very good. way ahead. <laughs> Re, <laughs> Reguilon is, is a good player. I love him. I think he's, I think he's top draw. Don't know why Roma just decided to get rid of him. Mm. I think, uh, Bale is like a, with Bale is more of a sentimental thing. I think, uh, you know, he's, he's coming towards the end of his career at the top, top level in terms of like, what is he, 32 now, 33? Yeah, 32, 33. His, his next move will probably be at MLS or something or mm. something like that. Do you know what I mean? Actually, I think Where he can be a big player. star. But um, Son, you know, I thought, saw a thing the other day, is Son world class. For me, not world class, but he's not far off it. Kane is top draw. You know, I think they've got a good squad. They got a good, and they're another one. They got a very good eleven. Once you lose a couple, do you know what I mean? What have you got? Like, which is probably where they'll won't win the league because they haven't got the immense strength in depth. You know, if they get an injury to Kane, they're done. You know what I mean? In terms of being a an attacking threat with someone that's gonna get you a goal, can get you a goal at any time. Do you know what I mean? 
for me, for, for for me, I'm not I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Are we really surprised that that you know Tottenham are beating uh, who did they play today? Uh, Brighton. Uh, Brighton, Brighton. You know what I mean. And for are you surprised that uh, a Bell can go and play against a Brighton and score? Come on, man. These are these are you know players. Even if he's not all the way fit, you're gonna expect him to score against these kind of t- teams, and you're gonna expect. Jose Mourinho to find some type type of formula system to, to to work with. What we what we've always criticized Spurs about is just their consistency. Like you know, what I mean, it's 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 there's proof in the pudding. Like they've not won a trophy in 10, 11, 12 years. They've not won the Premier League. They've not really, apart from the that, uh, the Leicester year or whatnot, um, when they missed out. Um, they've not challenged for the league. So it's, it's they've got a good team. They went. To, they got to the Champions League final, so the team that they had, although it was Poch's team, they, they still got quality players. So you're still expecting yeah. them to do well. Um, but what we want to know, now see from Spurs is that can they now enter that elite stage, that elite level of performances, consistency, and can they now push on for the league? That's what. That's where we got to see. I think a- anything else that they do, it's going to be no surprise if they try if they qualify for Champions League, like. They got a good enough team to do that, you know what I mean? Are they able to cross the line? This is where Spurs are at now. I think nothing less for Spurs. Let's stop giving them excuses about progressing. I think I think they need they need to win anything. Yeah, anything. man. Let's something. let's stop giving them I mean. excuses about our oh, progression or they're still oh this is Poch's players or what. Like no, like Jose Mourinho is there now. Like he will find a way. He's got this pedigree of winning stuff like that. So they have to win something or they have to challenge for the title. That that's 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 my stance on it anyway. Maybe not. I think, maybe, I think, sorry. I think let me say that. Look, maybe, maybe not challenging for the title, but you, uh, they should be in and around I'm like top three for the title. Yeah, I think, yeah, for me, yeah, for yeah. Me, I think if I'm a, if I'm a Spurs fan, what would you rather? What would you take? Would you take qualifying for Champions League top four, which is realistic, which they should do this year? Or winning the trophy, I think for them they need to I th- just take I think, off their I, back. I, I, I think, think they, that's I think they're capable. I think they're capable of both. I think qualifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you offered, if you offered the Tottenham fan today, yeah. listen, at the end of the season, you're going to come fifth, but mm. you'll win the Europa League, for example. Oh, I think yeah. they're taking well, the Europa well, that, League. That because that will that get you into Europe. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If you yeah. said like FA Cup and then or tra- tra- challenge, um, qualify for ch- Champions League, then they'll take Champions League. I get it. Yeah. But there's a lot of Spurs. Really, you think that... you think they'll take Champions League over winning FA Cup? Yeah. Yes. Because I, I I believe they're at that stage I think, where I think, they I think know an Arsenal fan does that. No 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 no. Honestly, that. there's a lot there's a lot of Spurs fans even now. Even we even if, if Pat was on here, he would say the same thing. Yeah. He would much prefer to finish in the Champions League spot than win the FA Cup. Just but, in terms of Spurs, what's the point? But a because... lot of a lot of Spurs fans though want that trophy, and I, I personally I feel like they've got a good enough team to go for a champion uh, a Champions League spot and get an FA Cup or get yeah, of course, a, of course. A, a, a league cup. They, they've got a good enough team. My right. thing is what I don't like is the fact that there's a lot of excuses for Spurs. Like let's let's cut the excuses. They're they're a team that should be competing, should be able to qualify for Champions League, should be getting a trophy. Like right. nah man. There's there's no excuses for Spurs this season. There's nope. no, there's none. And Spurs fans that I speak to would openly say, no excuses. They've got the world class manager in that they're mm-hmm. all happy and behind. They got a, um, a board that is back That's to the back manager in. because they've been able top, to plug the holes, all of the holes they wanted, got all of the players in they wanted. They're happy with all of their signings. Best, Spurs the fans are happy apparently. with all of their signings. So now, and they believe that they do actually have a squad. So Spurs have no excuses. No excuses. Season. And and to be honest with you, so far this season, you know, they've had games where they've looked scintillating and then they've had games like today or against Burnley where they've had to grind it out and they've, and they've grind it out. They could do you both. Know. They could do both. Yeah. Right. And, and obviously they've had the, the mad the West one, Ham like game. the Lanzini wonder goal <laughs> and the Newcastle penalty in the last dying minutes that's mm. robbed them of, of an extra four points, which would have been... Yeah, yeah. And, and again, this is what I was saying, that it's about fine margins. So for me, 
yes, we actually it's still early days. It's what seven games played at the moment. Yeah. So where where are Spurs gonna be after fifteen games, we don't know. But we don't know where anybody's gonna be at that stage. That's right. If we're looking at yeah. them right now, then Spurs are looking like they are gonna be title challengers as well this season. If we're looking at them right now, yeah. But yeah I, I yeah. just don't know. I just think they need to. I just think they need to win a trophy. I just think they need to win one. But the thing is, Don Lawrence, is this whole need to win a trophy thing. That's all been created based on fans and Arsenal fans. Yeah, and of, course, stuff. of course. Because really and truly, like we've, Pat has said it on here before, you know, a Wigan can go and win the FA Cup and then Wigan ain't even in the Premier League now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. winning a cup is great, it's brilliant and everything, but there should be more about you. It, should, it shouldn't just be winning the yeah, FA Cup. Yeah, I agree. In terms, of, in terms of That's... qualifying for the top four, is, is it, you're right, because... It shows that over 38 games, you were the top four teams in your country. Exactly. And then you know it, helps I mean? them, it helps you build on playing Champions League football next season, which I think is really important for any of the top teams to be doing, is playing Champions League football, especially when you're trying to keep building for, to, to be attracting players and everything like that. I think the bigger picture for Spurs obviously would be, and I agree with what Dash is saying, I think they are good enough to win a trophy and finish. That's the thing. Um, when I, but, when but, I, you know what? If, if you put this to me, like as a Chelsea fan, last season we came fourth. We came fourth in the league, didn't we? Fourth yeah. in the league, FA Cup final. If you would have offered me Chelsea to come fifth, but win that FA Cup game, I'm hundred percent taking coming fourth. But that's yeah. because maybe I'm used to so, so much success. But I think we needed to finish in the top four to even give ourselves a chance of making those signings. Yeah, Do you man. know what I mean? Mm. And it's the same Which with me. Out, I understand your point completely, like, well, in terms of you need to get in the top four. When we played Chelsea and we changed it and it looked like Oli prioritised the league over that semi-final, I, I totally agreed with it because I said no. yeah. the most important thing for Manchester United was to finish top four last season. The, just, only thing, the, the only difference I'll say that is, like, you got to remember our teams, we are used yeah, to with more one, success with one yeah, thing. Yeah, with one the thing. only thing that I would say for just this season alone, is the fact that I feel like Spurs have got a, a team. And then when I say that, no, they need to win a trophy or whatnot, it's like, as well as yeah. qualifying. qualifying. They've got a yeah. good enough team. Good there enough. is no yeah, excuses. Yeah. 100%. No, we, there's we, no excuses. Yeah, we, should, no we need excuses. to stop that because if, if Spurs really want to be known as big boy players and big in the game, top six team, this is, this is the pressures that's, that comes with that. That that yeah. elite, that elite uh, a bunch of, of, of teams and, and and clubs. When you're when you're uh, fighting on, on all fronts, you need to be able to do what you need to do. So with qualifying, you have when you got the best striker in the world. Well, one of the best. Strikers exactly, because Spurs Spurs will be talking about oh we have got Kane he's scoring all these goals and stuff and like this. And, and, and you, you know what I mean. So, so if you're Monday. not, they've got Boy, no man. excuse. They've got the firepower. The only thing probably they'll just say is that the defence sometimes can be shaky. Um, but apart from that, they've got the manager there, Jose Mourinho. And like we said, they've got... The, the board is actually backing Mourinho right now. Yeah. So yeah. if if it turned around and it didn't work, no one could blame the board. I know that Pat is always this, that, <laughs> Daniel Levy and all of that kind of stuff. But on this occasion, everything is aligned. I blame Daniel Levy either. You can't, can't even blame him. Every, this one's saying everything, 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 everything would you, is aligned with them. You got the stadium. You got the board back in the manager. You've got the manager. You've got the players. What more do you want? There's no excuses. Yeah, no Spurs excuses. have got no excuses. Man. Anyway, on, we're, gonna man. To, we're gonna have to wrap up now. Sorry to cut you there, Mister Dashiki Dash. Nah, it's all good, man. It's all it's good. <laughs> late. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, gents. Enjoyed that as usual. Um, let them know where they can find you, please, people. Starting with yourself, Dash. Yeah, man, I got my YouTube show still going on all fronts. I'm on what episode 29 that's going to be coming out soon. Ooh. That's a dash of sports, a dash of sports. So just go and check me out there. I just talk about all that hot topics, trending stories when it comes to any sports related stuff, uh, football, boxing, MMA, everything like that. So, yeah, man, so I know Sam's will put all the, the stuff in the description. Appreciate it, guys, man. 100 and Lawrence. Uh, my uh, same Twitter and Instagram at Lawrence V ninety three. That's it, really. I don't really post much on them, but yeah, I use it fleetingly, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing 
any any um interesting debates you you try and send me from from this pod so let me know <laughs> you agree or disagree with what i'm saying i will i will i will and for those of you that follow us you would have seen lawrence's techers in 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 his yeah uh, boy on there Pingers, yeah, it, it reminded me of the old get. school Pepe Reina days. <laughs> I don't think Pepe Reina ever had nah. them takers. Oh, hey, listen, man, he no, distri- yeah, he was a good distributor of the ball, man. Yeah, Pepe Reina was good to be fair. Was. Reina was top draw. Oh, I man, I've seen one of them from him. I remember, seeing, <laughs> I remember seeing Allison did one last season. Well, man, yeah, for Salah, Ooh. and then celebrated with him. Was that against United? No, 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 it weren't against us. No, it weren't against us. I can't remember who it was. It weren't against us. Definitely not us. Edison got it was them, against them you lot. as well. Oh. United. No, it weren't us. He pinged it and then Salah scored and he went to celebrate with him. Last minute. So oh, oh, no, no. That's not the pass I'm talking about. But I know where the one you're talking there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not the one I'm talking about. But yeah, no. But he did do one against United though, didn't he? It was United. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't a ping like that. Because you know, the one that Salah, Salah win and they, they, they end up winning 2 0 was last, like, last dying minutes. But I don't remember it being like that. I'm going to have to go and watch it. Yeah, watch it, it back. Man. It was Alisson. Alisson comes and does a knee slide because it's his pass, his assist. All right, I'm going to have a look. I'm going to have a look. Let Check me know. I'm Check that out. Let me know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> And this is everyone's a pundit. These were my pundits. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Until next week, we are going to be out. Peace. 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 Peace.